Why, hello there. So there are a lot of Souls-like titles out there, and I recently got a review code for the Tarnishing of Juxtia, and the art caught me and I thought I'd give it a try, and I played through it, and I'd like to share my thoughts with you. So the Tarnishing of Juxtia is a 2D action RPG developed by actual nerds and published by Mastiff. In total, I spent 11 hours with the game and I completed all of the major content during that time. The game is a 2D Souls-like snack by my estimation, and I think that will either be a hit or a miss with players based on a few elements that I'll discuss. But first, let's talk about a few more basics. In the Tarnishing of Juxtia, you play as the last creation of the goddess Juxtia. You are the last hope to end a war between your god and another god named Drelium. This war has not only ruined their realms with fighting, but Drelium created a curse called the Tarnishing, which overran both realms and turned the inhabitants mad. A ruined kingdom overrun by a curse? The word tarnished? Yep, it's a soul's leg. Juxtia uses a stamina-based combat system to beat enemies, using your melee weapon of choice. Your melee weapon is complemented by spells called brands, whose use is tied to a regenerating mana meter. Your character gains abilities from relics that are activated by engaging in combat and filling an energy rush meter, which when filled also gives increased stamina and mana regeneration for a short time. There are also equipable items called gifts that modify your playstyle, usually conferring both an advantage and a disadvantage. The game features armor that increases defense against different damage types and sometimes provides passive abilities. So all pretty standard fare so far, and to continue with that, Juxtia features standard character stats like strength and vitality that serve to increase health, stamina, mana, and how effective the scaling is on your weapons. You increase your stats at statues using experience called specs from killing enemies and, you guessed it, you drop it all on the spot when you die and will have to make it back without dying again to recover it. Juxtia has a connected world that is relatively linear in the beginning and end, with a middle act that lets you choose the order in which you tackle three spokes. The general gameplay consists of fighting and beating enemies and bosses along the way, as well as some light platforming elements. So the biggest strength of Juxtia is the pixel art, which drew me into it in the first place, and it conveys a lot of the flavor and atmosphere of the world. The landscapes are especially notable, with gorgeous vistas peeking through the foreground and building up the war-torn and ruined lands of the game in a really gorgeous way. The enemy and boss designs are also visually evocative and varied, ranging from stoic knights to horrific monsters to fantastical mechanical constructs. The strong visuals extend into enemy attacks and animations, which come together to give a hefty amount of identity to the decent variety of enemies that you will stumble across on your journey. This is true of the bosses as well, which do employ tried and true boss mechanics of the Souls-like genre, but carry their role well as the climatic event of the area, even if the difficulty feels a bit uneven at times. So those elements were undeniably highlights for me during my time with the game, but I'd say much of a player's enjoyment with Juxtia hinges upon these following elements in their varying levels of success within the game. It's a pretty short game, 11 hours to beat it with all the endings and optional content explored. This is in part because of its world design which is relatively linear at the beginning and end, but the level design is pretty good and it does feature shortcuts and optional paths, which did provide a bit of that satisfaction of seeing how the level loops back around on itself. I think it's worth noting that although it bears a resemblance stylistically to games like Death's Gambit, Blasphemous, and Hollow Knight, this has no Metroidvania elements to it. This is strictly a 2D action RPG as labeled which I mentioned because 2D Souls-likes often have some Metroidvania flavor thrown in to promote exploration and to connect the world in unique ways, but that's simply not in the scope of what Juxtia is trying to do, and I think that's fine. It's a relatively linear game that more or less feels intended to be traveled through once. On that note, I think this does create some odd moments in the level design sometimes, in that you regularly have these small arena fights 
where you're locked into a room and have to beat a few waves of enemies to progress, which is fine, but subsequently passing through it's just an empty room, making the limited backtracking and use of shortcuts easy, but also kind of empty of incidents sometimes. This is in addition to intentionally empty rooms, featuring a bit of platforming and highlighting the game's gorgeous vistas, which are great, but altogether makes the game feel a little empty at moments. So for someone like myself who has limited free time, I can appreciate the smaller scope of Juxtia's world and being able to see the game's content in a few sessions. But those looking for a more substantial experience or a game with a longer tail will probably find themselves a little bit disappointed. The story is pretty boilerplate for the genre. Most of the tone is conveyed visually and the story is pushed along with dialogue, and appearances of the goddess Juxtia to add some flavor. One quirk of the game is that in most games, you can exhaust dialogue from NPCs to a point where they will repeat a final line indicating that they've said their share for now, but in Juxtia they will actually start the current conversation over again, leading to some unintentionally comedic and strange moments that for me were not an issue and I was able to write off as some of the charming jank of a smaller indie title. Overall, the story felt comfortably familiar as a fan of the Souls-like genre, working in service of the atmosphere and giving context to the fun world and enemy designs, which was fine by me. The combat of Juxtia is relatively basic with the limited verbs of a single attack button, a roll, and some spells and activated abilities to use situationally. That being said, even these limited systems don't totally come together. There is greater input buffering than you might expect, combined with some relatively long combat animations, and this squares a bit oddly with the offensive focus of the combat in this game. There aren't shields, there's not really parries, and enemies have a poise meter that will stagger them for a moment when it depletes. As previously mentioned, you have this energy rush system, which encourages you to tactically push the attack to change abilities and enter energy rush, to increase stamina and mana regeneration for a short time, so you end up with a combat system where the long animations and high input buffering encourage reactive gameplay, but the other systems encourage offensive gameplay, and the game isn't robust enough to make this a player decision about how they'd like to play. This often threads the needle to feel tactical, primarily in the first few hours, and the encounter design throughout the game is pretty decent, but by the mid-game I could basically spam the attack button to stagger enemies and activate my energy rush to keep the punishment going, only needing to roll out to heal and dodge some of the more punishing attacks or larger swarms of enemies. Which was still pretty fun, but it did feel pretty basic and a bit disappointing that these systems were not robust enough to stand alone or cohesive enough to work together. And one element that may vary for players but was an issue for me was that the game crashed a few times. One of these times was right after beating a boss that I found to be a little bit tedious, undoing my progress and forcing me to fight the boss again, but with even less patience. Ultimately, I think the tarnishing of Juxtia is a solid fine. It is by design a good looking 2D Souls-like snack, delivering a by the numbers story for the genre and gameplay that is a bit simple and not totally cohesive but enough to get you through the 8-10 to 10 hours that it will take to play through all of the content. If you're someone like me with not much spare change and a whole lot of free time, I'd pick this up on sale and enjoy a weekend with it. And I don't mean that to be damning of the game, I think this is in this really nice spot where not every game needs to have this long tail and you need to play it for 40-60 to 60 hours. And if you're someone like me who is in a position where sometimes you just want a pretty competent 8 to 10 hour experience with a Souls-like game and some beautiful pixel art, then this is a good game to check out. Again, I'd probably say on sale, but you know, you have a free weekend, give yourself some time, and I think you'll enjoy your time with the Tarnishing of Juxtia. I hope you enjoyed this review. Usually I do not do review content, but I peek in here every once in a while and I think this was a fun game and I appreciate being sent a review code for it. If you are interested in my more typical story and lore content, you can check out the channel where I'm talking tons about Elden Ring, and you can even find my Elden Ring review on the channel. Thanks for watching.